The First Thanksgiving, written by J.I. Anderson, illustrated by Gloria McKeown. Thanksgiving is a wonderful holiday. It is a time for family, a time for friends. It's a time for thanks. Just as the pilgrims gave on their first Thanksgiving 400 years ago. Before the pilgrims came to America, they lived in England, but they were not very happy there. The pilgrims wanted their religious freedom. King James had ordered everyone to worship in the Church of England. Those who did not obey him were punished. With the king's permission, the pilgrims left England to seek their religious freedom. They were given a charter to settle in Virginia, where Captain John Smith had founded the Jamestown Colony in 1607. Two ships set sail, but one leaked very badly and had to turn back. Finally, on September 6, 1620, the Mayflower left Plymouth Harbor in England and sailed west. Christopher Jones was the captain. The Mayflower carried 102 passengers. Not all were going to America to seek religious freedom. Some, like John Alden, were workers and craftsmen. Others were looking for a chance to own land and to better their lives. Captain Miles Standish was there to protect them. The pilgrims knew they would be facing danger in the new world. The voyage was not pleasant. The Mayflower was a small ship. It was only 90 feet long and 25 feet wide at most. Below the deck, the 102 passengers, men, women, and children, were all crowded into cramped living quarters. The ship's cargo areas were also crowded. They were filled with tools, blankets, pots and pans, rope, fishing gear, gunpowder, furniture, and barrels of flour, seeds, and grain. The pilgrims would need all these things for their start in the new world. The voyage across was often rough and stormy. High winds rocked and tossed the ship about. Icy water seeped into the leaky ship, soaking the passengers and making them sick. To keep warm, they often had to light fires and cooking pots and huddle together. There were no beds to sleep on, no extra water for bathing or for washing clothes. There were few hot meals. Week after week, they ate cold biscuits, salted or dried beef, oatmeal with molasses, and sometimes cheese. But sometimes on warm sunny days when the sea was calm, the passengers were allowed on deck. And while Captain Standish trained his men, the children played. Would it ever end? After spending over 60 days at sea, many wondered if they would ever see land again. Then, on the 66th day, a sailor spotted something far off in the distance. Land ho! he called, and everyone raced up on deck to catch a glimpse of their new home. On November 11th, 1620, the Mayflower dropped its anchor off the tip of Cape Cod. Storms had blown the ship off course. The pilgrims were very far north of Virginia. Still, everyone was happy and eager to go ashore. But, before they left the Mayflower, the pilgrim leaders knew that they needed a set of laws to govern their life in the New World. So they drew up the Mayflower Compact. The Mayflower Compact was an agreement signed by every man on the ship. They all promised to obey the new laws, and they elected John Carver, their first governor. Then, before anyone could go ashore, 
Governor Carver, sent Captain Standish and several other men to explore the coast to find a good place for a settlement. The group went ashore and explored the sandy beaches. They discovered good water for drinking, small evergreen trees, and buried Indian corn. But they sailed still further until they reached the bay at Plymouth. It had taken nearly a month to find the right place for their settlement. Plymouth seemed safe. It had good land and a good harbor. It also had a high hill where a fort could be built for protection. In December, the pilgrims went ashore. This would be their home. Now there was work to be done. It was winter and they wanted to build their houses quickly. They would live on the Mayflower until their houses were ready. The first building to be built was the common house. It was 20 feet long and 20 feet wide, and it was going to be a prayer and meeting house. But when the snows came, the pilgrims huddled inside the common house just to keep warm. And before long, it would be used as a hospital. The first winter in Plymouth was hard. The pilgrims had very little food. Sickness and disease spread quickly among them. By the time winter was over, half of them were dead. Many remained sick and weak, and all wondered what was ahead in this strange new land. Then suddenly, winter turned to spring. By March, the sixth house had been built. The earth turned green, the sun was warm, the flowers seemed ready to bloom. There was a feeling of new life as the pilgrims began planting their crops. One spring day, something strange happened. An Indian walked into the village. At first, the pilgrims were frightened. But the Indian raised his hand in friendship and said in English, Welcome, I am Samoset. Later, he told the pilgrims many things about the land. He told them how a tribe had once lived where the pilgrims were now living. He also promised to return the next day with Indian braves who would trade with them. Samoset belonged to the Wampanoag tribe. Eventually, Samoset brought his leader, Chief Massasoit, to meet the pilgrims. Chief Massasoit and Governor Carver signed a treaty. They agreed to live in peace, share the land, and to help each other. One of the most interesting Indians Samoset ever brought to Plymouth was his friend Squanto. Squanto spoke even better English than Samoset. Squanto had once lived in England, having been taken there by boat. But Squanto was now back in the land of his birth and was willing to help the pilgrims. Squanto taught the pilgrims many things. He showed them how to plant corn by using a dead fish for fertilizer. Corn was not grown in England, and it was still a strange new plant to the pilgrims. Squanto showed them how to grind corn to make flour, how to bake with it, and even how to make it pop. Squanto also showed the pilgrims how to hunt with a bow and arrow. He showed them berries and nuts in the forest that were safe to eat. He taught them where to dig for clams, where to catch lobster, and where to fish for cod, trout, and eels. Squanto came to live with the pilgrims at Plymouth. That spring, when Captain Jones sailed back to England on the Mayflower, he wondered what their fate would be. Fortunately, with Squanto's help, they would be able to survive in the new world. All spring and all summer, the pilgrims worked hard in the fields. In the autumn of 1621, they harvested their first crops. It was a good harvest. Now there would be plenty of food to help them survive the coming winter. In October, William Bradford, the new governor, 
called everyone together. God has been good to us, he said. Let us give thanks. Everyone began to prepare for a big feast of Thanksgiving. The women worked for days, baking and cooking. The men went into the forest to hunt wild turkeys, and the boys fished for trout in cool, clear streams. Everyone had a job to do. Young children dug for clams on the beach, others worked in the kitchen, and still others picked berries and nuts or gathered firewood. The pilgrims did not forget to invite their friends, the Indians. Squanto led Chief Massasoit, Semaset, and 90 Wampanoe braves to Plymouth. The Indians brought five deer to add to the feast. And what a great Thanksgiving feast it was. The pilgrims wore their best clothes. All kinds of tasty foods were set on the long tables. There was cornbread, cranberries, turkey, pumpkin, clams, eels, deer, peas, squash, and fish. Some of the foods that the pilgrims had found in America. The first Thanksgiving celebration lasted for three days. There was much fun and laughter. There were contests and games, dances and races. The pilgrims did not forget to give thanks on that first Thanksgiving. They thanked God for all that was given to them, a good harvest, good friends, and a good life in America. If you enjoyed this read aloud and would like to hear more, Please like, subscribe, and share with your friends.